Hey guys, as you might know from my previous videos, I've did a lot of playing around with this game console from Datafrog. It's called the Retro Game. So, uh, some of you guys asked me to actually do a battery mod on it. Also, this website right here has a lot of tutorials about doing different types of battery modes. I wanted to try my own battery mode, so this video is about that. What I also did is actually move the card reader that used to exist in the cassette thing that was uh, living here all the way underneath this cap here. Feel free to skip this step because it's tedious, you don't actually need it because if you put in an uh, internal uh, micro SD card that's let's say 64 gigabytes uh, large, you don't need any more space for it for most uses. So as I said, feel free to skip this uh, step right here. And let's see how that went. The first thing to do is a bit of planning. I had several batteries I could try this with. I chose one that I figured it kind of fits and decided on what I need to do to make room for it. The battery I used is about this big and as you can see this cartridge port is in my way. It has to go as well as the top right corner battery contact. So it's clear from the beginning this is an irreversible mod. Next, I'm checking to see what are the charging pins and if the correct charging voltage is available. And to my satisfaction it is. A closer look to the microSD external cartridge reveals that only 10 pins are actually used. This is backed up by the observation that only the last 12 pins are soldered on the cartridge port. It is then clear that this unit is not compatible with original Game Boy Advance cartridges and we can safely remove this port. Its only use seems to be to allow extra external capacity to be added. And now I'm preparing to do the tedious task of moving this card reader to where the old battery used to live. For that I will need to make it smaller to fit. This is an optional step of our battery mod tutorial. Remember, if you do the operating system mod that is described in this other video, on a larger capacity internal SD, chances are you will never need the extra space, so save yourself the trouble. This is the last thing to remove from the motherboard, the battery contacts. With that out of the way, I can place the battery I have and see how it fits. Now I need to also modify the plastic case. With the cartridge out of the way, this bay also needs to go. I always had in mind keeping as much sturdiness to the case as possible, so I only cut what I figured I had to cut. Depending on the size of the battery you plan to install, you also need to figure out how much you need to cut around it.
have it. The result of about two hours of something I can only think of as crafting. Now, to the benchmark. I did the exact same benchmark on the Quake 1 menu demo loop that I did on my other video, so the measurements would be consistent. We can see that the autonomy of this handheld has considerably risen from 221 minutes to 600 minutes, so this mod was a success. Please bear in mind that if you use emulators, those will draw more power and consume the battery much faster, so don't rely on the values here as absolute. If you plan to do your own mod, do let me know about it in the comments below, I'd love to see what you guys come up with. Use the comments also for critique, other questions or just to read what others like you commented about this. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. See you around!